Okay, um, um, Anuradha, you put it on YouTube as well, right? Are there a lot of people on YouTube? Ah, Prabodh, the second year is coming. Okay, we start at uh, the 2.15. Can everybody basically have it on mute? We have muted everybody, but please stop uh, putting video as well because uh, that slows down the transmission for everybody. We can have video when we go into question and answer time. Okay, okay, I'll carry on. I'm going to carry on. Okay, bye. Okay, I'm rather. Shall we start the meeting now? I just spoke to Harry. He can't get on. He has some technical problems. Welcome, everybody, to the January Zoom meeting of the Numismatic Society of Sri Lanka. Uh, we, uh, we normally meet at this time at the Royal Asiatic because Royal Asiatic is closed. We have to now meet on Zoom. So I thought we should start a series of lectures on Zoom, which is this is the first. It will be also screened. Uh, it will be available after the meeting on YouTube if anybody missed this time. And uh, hopefully, um, people will be more people will be in. Uh, I was today. I'm going to talk about commemorative coins from Sri Lanka, and it is a subject which I have spent some time uh, putting all this material online. So that and I dis decided today, instead of doing the normal. Microsoft PowerPoint, I have decided to give this lecture using my website, which has been online since 1998. And hopefully it will work out, um, save me from creating a, a separate PowerPoint for the lecture. So the oldest commemorative coin in Sri from Sri Lanka is speculated by DP Hetiarachi to be 
the one created for uh, Arahat Mahinda in 247 BCE. This is a coin which has four emblems, which are uh, assumed to be uh, Buddhist emblems, the elephant, uh, trail swastika, um, the um, Dagaba and, and the Dagaba. So these four things have been uh, recognized and assumed to be a representation of the Buddha's life. Hello. Yeah. Huh? Sound. Oh, okay. I am. Is there an issue with sound? And uh, I can hear you clearly. Okay, fine. Uh, so uh, then uh, I will talk about this coin, but that's not the topic of today's uh, discussion. Uh, we'll talk about it later on another day. Uh, the oldest uh, recorded commemorative coin was the Idma issued in 42 BC by Brutus after the assassination of Julius Caesar in 44 BC. And this particular coin is extremely rare and a similar coin sold on auction recently for $4 million. So that's what an old commemorative coin will cost. So getting down to the topic of our lecture today, which is the commemorative coins issued by the, uh, um, the uh, Central Bank of Sri Lanka. I will go through, there are about 70 coins which were issued uh, and I would uh, you now get on to the full screen board. Okay. Uh, so uh, this coin is the first of the commemorative coins which were issued in 1957, soon after the Central Bank started in 1950. It was issued for the 2500th anniversary of Buddha Jayanti, which is the canonical birth of the nation as well as the passing of the Buddha. And the, the one rupee coin of the Dagaba uh, in the obverse, I have not clearly recognized. The shape is not similar to most Dagabas, which are bubble shaped. This is bell shaped. But I was looking on the internet to get an appropriate picture. And I assume that it may be a representation of the tooth relic, which is which is on a dagaba, which is similar to a bell-shaped dagaba. So, okay, uh, Prabhuth, you can hear me now. Okay. So the, uh, the second coin, there were two, uh, there were two coin set. Well, the second coin has a double moonstone. The moonstone is generally a half moon, but for some reason this used a double moon, uh, double of it. And it is similar to the, the, shpri, uh, the seal for Ceylon, which was a proposed seal, which uh, was proposed in 1954 for the state of the uh, state of Ceylon. I don't think it, it was ever used. I'm not sure of applications of it, but it was also a double moonstone and it has three in the center. And uh, I'm not sure whether it, because of that it was based on that, but um, uh, it is somewhat different to that three that was used in that uh, steel for Ceylon, which was proposed in 1954. In 1968, you can see that 10 years later, we issued a second commemorative coin, which was for the UNFAO for a, a Grow More Food campaign. It was uh, uh, issued uh, with UN collaboration. Uh, Grow More, these FAO coins have been issued all over the world as Sri Lanka joined the whole world in issuing a coin for that uh, Second World Food Congress. And on the on its side is King Parakram Bahu. I'm not sure whether it's King Parakram Bahu. It's claimed to be Pulasti, who was a sage of that era, 
but that his image appears on it the sri lanka golden age of uh, growing food is sort of attributed to king parakram bau who said no no drop of water should go waste without uh, use for agriculture we waited almost another 10 years and issued the next pair of uh, coins which is for the non aligned conference which was a, one of the most major international conferences held in sri lanka in 1976 what is uh, appears here in the main image is uh, the bmich which was built for the conference to hold the conference and it there were two sets of coins uh, issued one uh, two coins and they were also issued as proof coins now uh, proof coins are coins which are mint, minted with much higher quality than the ordinary coins and and th these are uh, issued that this particular proof set is not very common and i don't think many collectors in sri lanka have have it it appeared in a uh, box like this two coins issued in a box like this and i uh, i was lucky to find one of these boxes in the us it was most probably been given to most uh, delegates who attended the conference so it was two coins it the shape was uh, uh, seven sided similar to a modern uh, coin that has just been issued and it appeared as two coins one was a 2 rupee coin and the other was a 5 rupee coin uh, i should then go on to the this is the third issue of coins the fourth issue of coins is also very interesting it was a issue to re recognize uh, jr jawadana who was uh, elected president of the country in 1978 one year after he won the election in 1977 and changed the constitution his coin is interesting for many reasons it uh, the actual the first coin that was issued was not like this it was actually uh a uh, coin which had a different format uh, a straight edge the shoulder here uh, of the coin has a straight edge and uh, that uh, coin was issued by him because there it was a rush order by the royal mint which took some time in creating the coin so Tuan Sally, who had gone to London, brought back with him a so small consignment for the ceremony on the second uh, of February, nineteen seventy-eight. And at the time when he went to uh, UK, the Royal Mint decided to also uh, issue a single coin in gold, and asked um, Tuan Sally. to take it back and gift it to jr jawadana so this was the gold version of the coin when jr was informed about it he requested the uh, the minting of another 39 coins actually initially it was 30 and then they ex expanded it to another 10 coins and these 39 coins were minted and given as gifts to cabinet ministers of the time so this was the first of the coins which were not issued to the public could i ask people who are not on video put on put on uh, remove your video from the screen thank you um then uh, this particular coin so these are very rare because not of them were sold i would consider this to be one of the presentation coins there are four such coins in a collection which were never issued uh, to the public so this is one of them uh, so let me uh, go back it was uh, when the first coin was issued uh, in 78 nobody recognized it as anything special 
all the coins were distributed and later on when the actual mint of 2 million uh, coins were brought to sri lanka it was noticed that the first coin that had been issued is from a different die and therefore significantly different uh, there was a notice which was put up in the newspapers uh, uh the article written by um, raja vikramasinghe in the newspapers which talked about um, the fact that this was a rare coin so a lot of them had gone into circulation and to find the uh, 2000 coins had gone into circulation and to find one of those 2000 coins from circulation is extremely rare but it has happened i know people who have found uh these coins in circulation but uh, otherwise uh, then uh, the coin is in uh, uh is this coin so this is one of the few coins now i don't know what the market price is it was about 50 dollars those days i think it is lot more now because uh, there is no supply of it okay the next coin which was uh Uh, which was the uh, 1981 issued for the in, um, uh, 50th anniversary of universal adult frontage we actually got a that frontage in 1931 long before most countries in the south asia and in the world i think and this is the coin issued it had a picture of the um were uh, uh old parliament which is now the presidential secretariat which was where the cent uh, banks uh, the first uh, parliament was now it the parliament has shifted from colombo to kotte after that 1981 we got a 2 rupee coin uh issued for the mahavali and uh, the mahavali coin was uh, uh mahavali coin was issued uh, and it became the standard 2 rupee coin in its size for the rest of the uh, years um, the mahavali dam was a large structure which was opened by the queen in sri lanka in 1981 the queen visited sri lanka in 1981 we were because most of the funding had been done by england for that 1987 had our next uh, issue of a uh, uh, go um, coin it was for president premadas's year international year of shelter for the homeless that was a program that he initiated and there was this conference uh, and this central bank now that coin also was issued as a frosted proof uh this frosted proof i have not got this coin it was never issued to the public only about 200 of them were issued i got this uh, particular image uh, from online i think from thing even the central bank website doesn't show this coin so i If anybody has one of these frosted proof 10 rupee coins i would much appreciate getting a good scan of it uh that is one the second of the coins that were never issued to the public there are four in all the main coin was a circulation coin but the ones that were issued the proof ones were not issued to the public uh this is the first uh, commemorative coin for the central bank itself is the 40th anniversary coin it was interesting that this coin uh, at 500 rupees was issued at face value at 500 rupees and therefore you can consider this as a circulation coin the central bank did not have permission to sell coins at above the face value this was a brilliant uncirculated coin and it was issued at face value so it could be actually considered a uh, circulation coin uh, then uh, at the same time uh, 200 uh, uh, issues of a frosted proof was minted in england by the royal mint now that is 
quite different. If you can see the difference between a frosted proof and a BU coin, is the fact that all this region around the coin is has a sh frosted shape. Uh, 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 shape here, this one, okay. So therefore, uh, these coins uh, are considered different. They are different type because it's a frosted proof and. Uh, unfortunately, only 200 of them were brought down to Sri Lanka for the people who participated in that celebration at the Central Bank. Uh, it's very rare to find in Sri Lanka, but 2,000 of them were minted and sold directly by the Royal Mint uh, from, their, uh, from England. And this may be the first Sri Lankan coin to be been sold uh, at least NCLT, which was sold in thing. This was the first, no, also the first non in a way in the non circulating legal tender coin, because all the coins, uh, commemorative coins previously had been uh, issued, even if they were issued in proof, were also issued into circulation. So this, this coin marginally went into circulation because of the uh, being issued at face value, but in general, they are not circulating coins. What it had was the old uh, central bank building. Uh, this building was uh, destroyed by the Tigers in 1996, but this was the build as it was before that. In 1991, there was uh, two coins issued for the SAF games. Uh, this was the design of it was suggested by uh, Brigadier Munasinghe, who is one of our members, and he actually proposed that the two coins be done in the shape of a punch mark coin, a silver coin, and a gold adakahaman, one eighth akka. And unfortunately, the actual nature of a a punch mark coin was lost in the designers, and this is what we ended up with. Uh, we have five symbols, but they are really not punch marks. Uh, this 100 rupee coin is a silver coin. It's uh, pretty difficult to get now, even though it was fairly common those days. Uh, and then there is the gold coin. The gold is a, a, a very small coin. It has uh, SAF games and 1991, and it has the seated king on the other side holding a pot, which is what is similarly found in the Akka, but clearly a completely different design entirely to the standard Akka. I have uh, these coins are fairly, uh, now fairly expensive. And when you are collecting these coins, I wanted to say one should maintain keeping all the boxes and whatever that it comes in a lot of people throw them away but actually if you are a proper collector you should also collect the box may not go to the extent of this one which is actually one of the box including the sealed envelope so i would consider this a mint tin box i have not seen i assume there is a gold coin inside but uh, <laughs> At least you should keep all the packages. Um, okay, next was another the president, uh, 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 the second president, Rana Singh Premadasa. He was our second executive premier. He actually issued one for his third anniversary of being president. And that is also a very interesting uh, series of points. There is the standard uh, circulation issue of which there were 25 million minted. Then there was a frosted proof of it, cupronical frosted proof of it, of which 2,500 were issued. And he wanted to follow J.R. Jawadana, so he got the, uh, um, the Royal Mint to produce uh, uh, 2,000 coins in silver, 
And these coins, very interestingly, we, this is the first and only silver rupee from Sri Lanka because in 1917, when we are before 1917, when we issued a currency note, it was all Indian rupees which circulated in Sri Lanka. In 1970, it became a currency note. And in 1963, when the currency note was made back into a coin, it was issued in Cupronica. So this happens to be the only silver coin, a silver rupee, which is what it should be. And unfortunately, the weight is not correct. It is only seven grams when it's the silver rupee was 11 grams. And he also got 100 coins minted in gold, just like the JR coin. Now, this is also another coin which was never released to the public. Um, I have not got one. I know a few people who have managed to buy one. They also were given to government ministers and it has gone in, into the market. It's very expensive, a couple of... Uh, 100,000 rupees, I think, or half a million rupees for a coin or more. And this coin image I actually made with Photoshop rather than scan the image. So this is the second coin, the 100. I know the central bank still has a few more left in their vault, but it is not something that is available. The image of Premadas I picked up from the uh, internet looks very much like the image that was actually used. Uh, it's nice to actually find images which match up like that. For JR, I couldn't find the image. Okay, uh, uh, in 1993, uh, uh, the next issue of a, a coin, which was for the 2300th anniversary of Anubuddha Mihindu Jayanti, so it's the uh, 2000 anniversary of what was maybe the first commemorative coin issued in 243 BC. Uh, anyway, this one uh, had a, a scene of uh, uh, King uh, Mahinda, who was uh, King As Emperor Asoka's son, coming to Sri Lanka and meeting up with the King Devan Ampiyatis uh, in Anuradhapura of any. Mihintale of Anuradhapura. It has a bow tree on one side and the scene on the other side. Uh, very interesting about this coin is that Premadasa felt that the country's name was inauspicious for him. And he had the name changed from Sri Lanka to Sri Lanka in uh, 1992, I think. But this was uh, issued the year after in 93, and it was it is the only coin which has this spelling SHRI Lanka rather than the strand of Sri Lanka. Unfortunately, Premadasa was assassinated in May of 93, and after that, uh, the thing re the name reverted back to its original name. But this is the only coin that was issued, stamps have been issued from for about one and a half years with this spelling. The next uh, coin to be issued was in 1995. And in 19, there was also, again, it was a UN coin. Uh, this was a nickel brass fire, fire rupee coin. And this coin was issued both as a circulation coin and 5,000 of them were issued as proof coins. These coins, I think, are still available for sale at the Central Bank Museum. So, uh, till very recently, I don't know whether they're available now. And they are uh, one of the proofs. The, it was not a frosted proof. It was a similar to the standard coin. The FAO issued a coin uh, in 1995. Uh, the logo of the FAO has slightly been modified into an ellipse in this coin. And it was a two rupee coin uh, issued for the, also uh, the, the second uh, FAO coin, the first one being the Rome of Ford in 1968. That didn't have the logo of the FAO, but this was for the 50th anniversary of the FAO, soon after the 50th anniversary of the UN. And then we have a third coin, also in the same series of having a one rupee coin 
issued by UNICEF, which is the United Nations Children's Fund. And uh, it had the logo of the UNICEF embossed within the coin design and similar to the UN50 on the side. This coin particularly for some reason, even though 5 million was minted, it's a fairly difficult coin to find in uncirculated condition. In circulated condition, they are there. I think a lot of them went into circulation before a few of them were kept in uncirculated condition. Uh, in 1998, we had uh, 50th anniversary of independence. All these 50th anniversaries came all, all together. And this one uh, basic, uh, basically had the Dalada Maligava. Uh, and I think I got a very fairly close image to what is on the coin. It was the bimetallic coin. It was the only bimetallic coin, coin that has been issued in Sri Lanka then or till now. And it has on its side, CBSL embossed on its side. Um, but is, what is curious to be interested that the five rupee coin also had been issued into circulation with CBSL issued on the side. It had CBSL and it had in Singhala and Tamil, Sri Lanka, Mahabankwa and uh, in Tamil as well. But for some reason, which is not known, this, these coins had CBSL written four times in English on the side of the coin, uh, which is for independence, uh, sort of somewhat surprising that this didn't have any singular. And time when this coin was pointed out to the superintendent of the currency, I think long time ago, she herself was surprised. So possibly they had not specified it properly to the royal means that they needed all three languages. That's a quite curious. There's another thing is that this particular 10 rupee coin was minted for a long time in, in after that and became sort of a 10 rupee coin which was in circulation. And if the different mints had slightly different emboss on the side. So some, uh, the lettering is different on the side and if you look, have a small hold of these coins and check the side, you will find that the CBSL is written in different font, uh, slightly different font in three types I have found. Maybe there are more, but I think each order was done slightly differently. The 1998 uh, 50th anniversary had uh, uh, three coins issued. This was the 10 rupee coin. There was a thousand rupee coin, also NCL, this was an NCLT silver crown, uh, which had on its side um, the famous lion sculpture from Anuradhapura, uh, the seated lion sculpture from Anuradhapura. And this is uh, that coin, as well as a gold coin. The only uh, gold sovereign, the previous gold coin that had been issued for the soft games was 12 karat gold. It was not pure gold. Whereas this gold coin was issued uh, at that time for 5,000 rupees. The price of a gold coin in 1998 was around 5,000 rupees, but the coin was sold for about 8,000 rupees to cover the cost of minting in proof condition. So it was not very popular among the people because uh, why pay 8,000 rupees for 5,000 rupees of gold? But we have inflation. So five years later, when this coin was issued uh, into uh, circulation, um, uh, not into, sorry, into, issued into circulation, it was the price of gold became 8,000 rupees. Uh, C Street, which is the gold people, started invading the central bank to buy these coins because these coins were still being sold at 8,000 rupees and the gold price had gone up beyond 8,000 rupees. So immediately the issue of coins was stopped of all these coins 
and central bank got permission to sell coins at not at the price that they were issued. Now, I, I forgot to say that from in 1991, the central bank got monetary board permission to sell at cost price, which is higher than the price of the face value of the coin. And here they got permission to not only sell at higher price, but as well as to adjust the price of gold and silver coins, depending on the bullion price of the coin. So this coin was issued at much higher prices before it was issued back into circulation. It's one of the prettiest uh, gold coins, I think it's, uh, I don't know how, I don't think my colorize a proper scanning of it and showing it does justice to it, but uh, this particular coin is a very beautiful gold coin. I need to photograph these coins rather than scan them because then you can get the full glory of it. Uh, if you photograph it normally, you get a fairly black coin, which is not what is nice. So I photoshopped it away so that it is bright. But I think if I photograph it with a camera, then I would get a much prettier image. Something I need to do. Okay, at that time, they also issued a, plus, a polymer banknote as well. So there were four numismatic items issued. This particular emblem is the bronze, uh, uh, um, the bronze from the National Museum in Sri Lanka, the gilt bronze, which is one of the most famous statues uh, that we have from the eighth century. And because the older and more famous statue has been stolen and taken away to the British Museum, which is the Tara statue. So this is the best treasure that we have of bronzes. In 1996, Sri Lanka won the World Cup, but there was no coin issued for it. The coin was issued commemorate in the 1996 win of the World Cup in 1999. This is the picture of the cup that was issued. And this is a picture of Arjuna Ranatunga uh, holding the cup after the victory. So this was also a two coin set, a five rupee coin, which went into circulation. And it even had little dots here, which was supposed to be recognizable by people with using Braille, uh, so that blind people could recognize what coin it was. Uh, it was issued in uh, go, uh, silver as well, a thousand rupee coin. It didn't have the braille. You're not supposed to be touching these coins. So clearly it didn't have the braille on the side. And this toy the same design as the other coin, but except for it being thousand rupees. One another thing to be interesting is that it these coins had much more English than the other languages. Normally, the coins had all three languages, like the value in all three languages and numerically. Whereas here, because it was an international event, all the name of the country who participated in the Cricket World Cup uh, in, uh, were actually written round the coin and in 1999. We lost that World Cup in 1999, even though we won it in 96. Okay, then comes uh, 1999 when we had uh, 50th anniversary of the uh, Sri Lankan army. Uh, from, it started soon after independence in 1948. And it was also issued as two coins. One was a nickel plate, a steel coin uh, here, and as well as a uh, frosted proof also was a nickel plate and steel coin, but it was a frost proof. You can clearly see the difference by the additional frosting that you see on this image. So this coin also was, is a commemorative coin. It, and the, but the one rupee coin was also was NCLT. It was issued uh, at higher than face value and not, did not really get into circulation. I think a large number of them were minted and give, gifted to the soldiers 
but uh, they were not things uh, put into circulation. Public couldn't get it for a rupee. Uh, 2000 when central bank started its series of coins, every, uh, commemorative coins every 10 years. And this was the 50th anniversary commemorative coin. It has the new central bank building, which was built after it was destroyed in 1996. And it is somewhat different to the old central bank building. Uh, the image that I have is clearly not the image, it's a slightly different image, but uh, it has on this side, uh, it has the eight Ashtamangala around the coin with the sun face in the middle. And the eight Ashtamangala designed by Ace Jawadana, who was governor of the central bank at the time. It has the swastika and it has the, you know, the two fish, uh, Board, the Chamara, and the conch. And these symbolic, uh, uh, symbolic symbols have been used for prosperity. So that is why it was used on this point. Okay. The Navy had its 50th anniversary. Again, issued two coins. It has a gun boat here on this side, and it has the logo of the Navy on the other side. Uh, I don't think that I'm, I'm not sure whether the gunboat is the correct gunboat I have selected in this picture. Uh, and this coin also was issued both in a as a uh, thing as a, a proof coin. And here is the proof coin. It's much higher quality than that. And it was uh, issued, and this is also Cupronica. Uh, but this is the only coin, very interestingly, which was minted not at the Royal Mint, was minted in Paris, by the Mint in Paris. And it is one of the few coins that were not minted till then at the Royal Mint. So the central bank was playing around trying uh, to mint coins elsewhere. Uh, the 19, 2001, we got the 50th anniversary of the Air Force. And only 2,000 coins in proof. No coins were issued in BU. And 800 of the proof coins were issued to the Air Force personnel. Only 1,200 were issued to the public. And for some reason, I think somebody bought up a lot of those coins and it went, it has become an extremely rare coin, commanding a large price. It's one of the few coins that I don't have two of each. I try to keep two, and this one I have only one. The only coin I have only one of them. And that is because it is selling for a price, too ridiculous a price that I'm not willing to pay that price for that. Uh, so this is, uh, it had the logo of the, 650th anniversary on one side, uh, and it had the uh, logo of the uh, min, uh, of the Air Force on the other. So 2001 gave another coin, which was the Colombo Plan. Colombo Plan was a thing um, uh, organization which are created in 1951 by the Commonwealth of governments, and it is called the Colombo Band because it was proposed that year. And this coin was issued into circulation. There was no proof of it. Ninety two 2003, we had a 250th anniversary of uh, an event that happened in 1700s. And it was it had the issue of where well, we had a uh, monk from thailand coming uh, to uh, sri lanka and starting a bhikshun i think it was a bhikshuni i think oh, i'm not sure and uh, this there was a pair of coins one with a, a, monk, a, a buddhist uh, a sri lankan monk and a second coin with 
uh, uh, Thai monk. So this is the first time that we have had a coin issued with a non-Sri Lankan on the coin. Okay. The, these were two pair of coins which issued in some and 2006 came around and again we have the second issue uh, from independence where we had three coins issued for that and one was the uh, this coin which was the one that was sent into circulation has an image of Sri Pada. I think I managed to get uh, image which is very close to the image that is on the coin. You even see the mountain on the side of the Siripada and the Siripada mountain which the temple on top and the path along which people climb up to it. This is the iconic uh, hill of Sri Lanka and it's the one pilgrimage that everybody has to do one time in his lifetime, uh, I think if once is enough, I have done it twice, but once you definitely have to do it. It's a spectacular view from the top. Uh, it was, there were three other coins issued. One was a silver uh, uh, coin, which was 1,500 rupees. Uh, the issue was very large, 20,000, and I think they're still available for sale at the central bank because it was far more than the requirement of uh, coins to be minted. And uh, I think they have still a lot of stock of this still available. And a 2,000 rupee coin, uh, which had the same coin, which had a gilt uh, Buddha at the time of birth. Looking at this coin, I think that it has uh, two uh, images, one on the reverse, which is for Theravada Buddhism, uh, concept that it is a philosophy, no symbolism, no symbols of the Buddha. And the other side, which has a symbolic uh, Buddha walking at birth, which is more the Mahayana concept of Buddhism as a religion. So I think this co uh, coin tried to uh, represent both sides of uh, Buddhism, both the Mahayana and the Hinayana on the two sides of the coin. Okay, came 2007, uh, we won the Cricket World Cup uh, uh, that year. Uh, no, we were runners up for the Cricket World Cup that year. And uh, they issued a coin in 2007 itself. And the bowler clearly is, uh, uh, was representation of Mullery, who was the uh, most famous bowler. But they did not actually say it was him. I couldn't, I found an image close to that, but sort of the orientation is wrong. I'm trying to find an image which matches the image on the coin, which I'm sure was done from an image, but I have not found it online. If anybody has an image which matches the image on the coin of Mullery, please send it to me. I will post it with acknowledgement on the website. It was also issued uh, as a thousand rupee coin, also, uh, and it was nickel plate, uh, nickel plated steel. It was not a silver coin and 10,000 were issued. It is not too difficult to get it because it's not a silver and it was a lot of them were minted. Uh, 2008, we have a two rupee coin issued for the Employers Provident Fund. Uh, this coin was issued into circulation. And it was also issued uh, for 1,000 rupees. This was an a brilliant uncirculated coin, which was not issued in, uh, was issued into circulation. It was sold by the central bank as an NCLT, non-circulating legal tender at higher than thousand rupees. And that time they also issued a frosted proof. 
this again was the fourth coin that was not issued to the public. So none of only hundred were minted. I tried hard to find one, but I have been unable to get a frosted proof of this coin. I'm not sure whether the central bank has even has any because when I asked them for it, uh, sort of I was told that they don't have any even in their vault. I don't think there is even one is, um, displayed in the currency museum, so maybe true. I think they were distributed at the event and people didn't think about keeping some of them for collectors as, as well as for archival purposes. Anyway, this image is from the central bank website. It's so the fourth coin that was not issued to the public. Uh, the 2009, the customs had their 200th anniversary and they issued this coin, uh, the one painful coin to find because for some reason, all of the coins were given to the uh, customs and the, you had to go to the customs and go through the enormous protocol to buy a coin. So this is coin was very difficult to obtain from the customs. In 2009, a cupronital coin was issued for the 60th anniversary of the Sri Lankan army soon after the LTT was defeated in 2009. And a coin was issued both in uh, cupronical, 1000 rupees, and in silver, which is uh, uh, higher quality. Uh, and the interesting fact is that the, that the, the cupro nickel coin was issued initially at face value of uh, 1000 rupees. Uh, they minted 200,000 of them, but a large proportion of them were given to the soldiers as a par part of the salary, uh, instead of uh, thousand rupees was taken out of their salary and they were paid with this coin uh, as part of their salary. Not much appreciated because uh, some of these coins were actually came back to banks uh, for uh, at thousand rupees because the soldier wanted his thousand rupees. Some I have, seen a couple of days in circulation condition. I have actually, I wanted to actually try using it uh, in uh, circulation, but never did. It had, uh, now it is, I think it was sold at much higher than say a thousand rupees. I think it was sold for about 1,500 rupees subsequently by the central bank. But we can uh, uh, consider this as a, uh, circulation issue because one thing is 200,000 of them were minted and they were actually issued into circulation. It's something similar to the 1940, uh, 40th anniversary coin, which also was issued at face value. So if you are collecting circulated issues only, this could be in a way considered to be a circulated issue. It didn't really circulate. Uh, then in 2010, the central bank issued its uh, next commemorative for the 60th anniversary. And it adopted uh, a different method which had not been used since, which is something called pad printing, where on the coin, you print in color the logo of the central bank. So it's a quite a nice co a coin. It is uh, a different format. It has a banyan tree on the other side. I think this is the large banyan tree that was sitting on the side, recently cut down to create a parking lot. But I think that is why they put a banyan tree there, but now that banyan tree no longer exists. That was a 5,000 rupee coin, the highest denomination coin, which was sort of matching the highest denomination that had just been issued into circulation as a currency note. Uh, 2011, we had a two rupee coin issued by the 
Air Force for their 60th anniversary. And this coin had this logo of the Air Force, the 60th anniversary logo of the Air Force. And this was also issued privately by the Air Force in a box which had a brilliant uncirculated coin, uh, not issued by the central bank, but it's still collectible. It is uh, issued in a box and one had to go to the Air Force to buy one of those boxes. Those boxes, box coins are now also becoming collector's items, but it had only a bit, uh, no different to a standard coin, maybe BU more, a bit more higher condition than the one that was put into circulation. 2011 was a year we had lots of coins issued from various things. Here was a Sambuddhat Vajanti coin, 2,600 years of, like the Buddha Jayanti coin was issued for 2,500 years, uh, 2,500, sorry, this is the, sorry, this is the 2,600 years, not of the passing of the Buddha, but of his uh, uh, becoming Buddha, the enlightenment of the Buddha. So this coin was issued by the uh, Buddhist uh, cultural center or whatever, and they tried to sell it. They couldn't sell it. They sent it back to the central bank. And that was the issue because the cultural center apparently didn't pay the full amount. And they just returned the coins. Uh, this was issued also as a circulation 10 rupee coin, which had just been issued into first time a 10 rupee coin into circulation in 2009. So this 10 rupee coin was issued in 2010 into circulation as a uh, some with the giant coin. Uh, right, uh, now 2011, uh, 1000 rupee uh, commemorative coin, which was issued for the People's Bank. Uh, the People's Bank, uh, and, uh, there was only 2,300 coins minted, and most of them were taken by the People's Bank and there are very few of these coins issued to the public, maybe about 200 or 300 of these coins were issued to the public. And we tried hard to get the central bank, uh, people's bank to release these coins, but I think they had already been distributed among their members uh, or their staff. And therefore this is also a fairly difficult coin to find as a collector. It had that all again, the center of the coin had been selectively gold plated. Now, if you, this was a bit unusual to get a coin issued for Ananda College, which is a school. Uh, most all coins up to this date had been issued for national events and rather than for individual organizations. One can say that the army coins also are national organizations. This was the first coin because of, I think the Ananda College had enough political patronage to ensure that this coin got issued. And it was issued in uh, 2011 for their 125th anniversary. I may be sort of biased because no coin was issued for Royal College where I went to and that is now 175 years old. Maybe we can get one for the 200th anniversary in, in 2035. Anyway, this coin was issued. It has uh, all caught in its picture in the diagram. So this is the coin which the first only American citizen on a Sri Lankan coin. So it has its speciality. Uh, it was uh, Ananda College wanted to sell it at higher than the value as a fundraiser, but was soon told by the central bank that they could only sell it at cost. And therefore, this coin was also took a long some time for Ananda College to sell it at cost. And I think they were down on the deal because they had to pay the central bank the full amount of money to actually buy all the coins and sell it at the same price that they bought it.
uh, 90, 2012, the next year, we had a coin issued. And this also has a fairly interesting story about it. It was minted by Japan, the only coin minted by Japan to celebrate 60 years of diplomatic relations between Sri Lanka and Japan. It had bad printing, and on this side, it had a, a dam which had been funded by Japanese aid. And on the other side, it had the logo of the Jap and the two events. This coin has that logo. The issue of this coin was promoted by Fred Medis, who was uh, one of our, the uh, founders of the Sri Lanka Numismatic Society. He was president of the Japan Sri Lanka Friendship Association, and he motivated this coin to be minted. It was minted in Japan, and most of the coins were actually sold uh, by Japan in, uh, encased within one of their, uh, uh, their sets of proof coins. So this actually coin was issued in Japan, and these boxes, which were quite, which are quite nice uh, with, with Japanese coins and our coin in the center was never brought to Sri Lanka. So any collector in Sri Lanka had to have them ordered from Japan and brought down to Sri Lanka. And there were also problems about uh, bringing Sri Lankan coins into Sri Lanka. Anyway, uh, none of those boxes came to Sri Lanka. I got a, managed to get one from abroad and it's a very much collectible. Uh, the coins themselves are, uh, were stored, lot were minted, even though 20,000 were minted, only a few hundreds came to Sri Lanka through the central bank. The rest had to be bought from eBay or whatever place that sold these coins. Even in Japan, they were sold on some auction. I have all the details on my website if you want uh, to look at it. Okay, came around uh, 2012, Sri Lanka two rupee coin issued for the uh, scout centenary of the scout movement from 1912 to 2012. Two million coins were issued and hundred of them, I think, were issued in a box. There was a special order from the Sri Lankan scout movement and they wanted to use it as a fundraiser. So they issued them in a special box. Uh, it's not official government central bank issue box, but uh, then the central bank told them that they could not actually sell it at a higher price because the coin was two rupees. So the Sri Lankan scout movement decided that they would gift one of these boxes to anybody who contributed 3,000 rupees to the movement. So you had to contribute 3,000 rupees to the scout movement to get one of these coins in the box. Uh, okay. Nineteen uh, 2014, uh, Bank of Ceylon 75th anniversary issued a coin. Uh, for the, it was again a five rupee circulation coin. For some reason, this has not gone into circulation. A lot of our commemorative coins don't go into circulation. I don't know whether the Bank of Ceylon got the whole stock of two million coins, but I rarely saw found this in circulation. It's not very rare, but uh, you do find occasion in circulation. But I mean, if two million coins are put into circulation, they should be very common. But it, clearly, we don't find too many of them. It has the 75th anniversary logo. It was also issued in a box by the bank. I have not got one of those options. Uh, 2014, 500 rupees. Uh, this, this was with Anagarika Dharmapala. I couldn't really find the exact image uh, that was uh, used for this coin. Uh, maybe it was this image inverted, I don't know. Uh, and it was a 500 rupee coin. 
and it was gift uh, gifted the first coin now is normally given to the finance minister or the president but this particular coin was first gifted by uh, uh, ravi karuna nayak to the indian prime minister narendra modi and this is a image of that gifting okay for francis came in uh 2015 and the central bank didn't realize that these coins will be much more in demand because of the international nature of it and issued only 1500 coins which have makes it an extremely difficult coin to get because there are so many collectors abroad who want this coin as it has Pope Francis on it, and we have issued on the thing. It was a, this coin was minted in Kreminka in Slovakia, which was minting most of our other coins as well. So it has the logo of the visit on one side, and it has uh, Pope, Pope Francis on the other side. couldn't get a nice picture of that coin and they're not coins that we can scan and get a good picture. I need to get a good photograph of it. Uh, 2015 again, another 500 rupee coin uh, issued for the Colombo Municipal Council, uh, 500 rupees. Again, an absolute pain to get one of the coins because the Municipal Council was given all the coins and you had to buy it at the Colombo Municipal Council and buying anything from the Colombo Municipal Council took ages because they were not geared up to selling coins. So like the customs coin, this also became a pain to buy. It was available for many years because nobody was willing to go and go through this one hour exercise to buy a pay something to the Colombo Municipal Council to buy it. It had uh, the logo of the 150th anniversary in front. And the, this is the logo of the Municipal Council. Okay. Um, this was uh, the coin uh, for the 150th anniversary of T, which was issued in 2017. And that was issued in a little box, commemorative box but that's also unofficial, not from the central bank, so the wooden box. And uh, this has a, the standard 10 rupee side ones on one side. And on the other side, you have the symbol of Ceylon T uh, issued, no English, uh, no singular or Tamil for the commemoration. Uh, nine, 2017, again, the uh, second school like the Ananda College, which was formed in two, 1917, uh, Ananda College, they are like sister and brother schools, Ananda College got a coin, so I think um, Visaka Vidyalaya also managed to uh, get a coin uh, for their 100th anniversary. And it's now have become, it was available for sale also again by at the Visakha Vidyale. And now it has become extremely rare for those who had not got a coin from the school at that time. People are used to getting it from the central bank, didn't follow the procedure, and now finding it very difficult to find one. Uh, 2018, uh, 75th anniversary of the Sri Lanka signature. And the coin also was issued in a small box issued by them, uh, sold at slightly higher price to cover their cost. And finally, that was 2019. There were no coins issued in 2019. And finally, in uh, 2020, uh, this coin was issued in as a NCLT, aluminium bronze 20 rupee coin, 
uh, in on the 31st of December last year. They just managed to issue it before the end of the year. And then it was sold to the public on the 1st of January. Um, 3,000 were minted. 1,500, more than 1,500 were gifted to staff of the uh, central bank. I don't think more than about uh, 600 were supposed to be sold in the museum and 100 each were supposed to have been sent to the regional centers. Only about 25 were sent to the regional centers. And they also sold out very rapidly in the regional centers. So we do, this coin, is, I'm sure, is going to become a very difficult coin to, for collectors to get. Many, many leading collectors have not been able to get this coin. Uh, it's uh, it's on a box. Yeah, I had a box somewhere. Uh, and um, it is, I think, a re collectible. If you can get one now, it is worth uh, getting it if you don't have it. Uh, there'll be a circulation issue of the same coin. And it would be most probably uh, not minted in aluminum bronze because that would be too expensive. It would be minted in steel plate, uh, uh, chromium steel, most probably like the rest of the circulation coins. Uh, this particular NCLT was the first coin minted in China for the central bank uh, by the China Banknote Printing and Minting. Uh, there was not much publicity given to that fact, and it was only there on the certificate, and I had to be confirmed with the central bank that it was, the coin also was minted there. They did not confirm where the circulation issue would be minted, whether it would be minted in China or in Slovakia. But uh, it, is, it is going to be its own type, and I think more difficult to get because most of the coins were distributed among central bank staff. So that is uh, what I have to talk today about thing. I have taken about more, a bit more than one hour to give the lecture. We have another half an hour or so for question time. And I wanted to start up, I didn't tell this at the beginning, but I like to explain uh, on the basis on which uh, coins are approved by the monetary board for issue of a commemorative. And it says after the Ananda College coin issue became a bit of a controversy, uh, there was this statement which came in the annual report saying uh, a person uh, that is issued for a person who has made a significant contribution to overall well being of Sri Lanka society or for an event local or international, which has been an important turning point in Sri Lankan society or to make a special initiative that could have a significant impact on the well-being of Sri Lankan society. So clearly it is questionable whether Anand the College coin was issued uh, keeping with this that monetary board approval, but then it is up to the monetary board to interpret uh, what it is. Uh, so it is not asked to question. Okay, I will now close my talk and open it up for discussion. If you have any questions, uh, you can ask it on YouTube. Anuradha, are you on? If you can you handle YouTube, I will handle the questions asked in the chat session here. Or if anybody wants to unmute themselves and talk, that is also possible. I prefer instead of unmuting yourself, I, I will allow people to unmute themselves, but you can unmute yourself by pressing on the space bar. And when you let off the space bar, you get automatically muted. So that will prevent uh, more noise on the in the meeting. So I will, uh, can, Andrade, can you unmute all? Or oh, they love them to unmute themselves. Don't unmute all, I Un love them to unmute themselves. Are there any questions? I'll stop sharing now.
Okay. If there are any questions by anybody, they can unmute and uh, ask questions. This uh, video will be also made available on YouTube. It is already on YouTube, uh, streaming on YouTube, and it will be there after the lecture to be watched on the same uh, screen, on the same uh, link that is there currently used. Uh, let me, uh, while waiting for questions, let me show a few other things. This is... Uh, okay, Kawan. Okay. Punchi uh, Eva, you have a question? Uh, yes. Uh, don't take this as a personal or private question. Okay? Okay. You can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Don't take it as a personal or private question. Because uh, you raised the uh, point of issuing a coin for Ananda College and all cut. Yeah, right. You as an Ananda has the right to reply. Yes. So I am a uh, little worried about your comments. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, now, I don't want to make comparisons with Royal College as you done because it's not uh, correct. Right? Because there's, there's a big difference between <clears throat> Ananda College and Royal College. Okay. Look, at the, look at the social set about 125 years ago. Right? right? Okay. Uh, Colonel Alcott was symbol. Right? Yeah. He's American, yes. Right? Yeah. And he's also American. Right? And uh, and he is a symbol of Buddhist, single Buddhist education in Sri Lanka. Yes. Okay. In 125 or more than that, but years, there was no single or Buddhist school. Right. Other than Kiruvenas, which uh, lived up to few uh, category and uh, single and Buddhist children had no place to go and study unless they they study English and also probably change in their religion. Right? So Carl Alcott is the person, right, who is a foreigner, yes, who simulated Buddhist revival people, no, Buddhist people to commence school for who were single Buddhist. Because most of the single Buddhists those days were very poor. Right. They had access to the existing colleges, which were also very few. So this. Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, in a, I, I don't want to. I, yeah, I, don't I want to agree. In that way, you can. I, I'm point not out. happy with your comments. Okay. I mean, I, I just went on the statement on the monetary board, not that I don't agree to Ananda College getting a coin. It is just that the monetary board talked of it as a national event. If you, are, if you put the uh, Buddhist revival by all court is in the national revival as a part of as a national event, then uh, I guess it can be considered a national event. Uh, I think uh, otherwise... Uh, it is a thing. Anyway, we'll see. I was scared. One of the main things I was scared was that there were so many other countries, other schools which might apply similarly. We have had, luckily, we have had only Visaka Vidyalaya 
which has requested a, a coin. And I think the central bank has made it extremely prohibitive for any school to request a coin. And in that way, made it difficult for other schools to get a coin for themselves because they have to outlay something of the nature of 10 million rupees or more to get a coin as well as to issue the coin at face at the value that they get it from the central bank. And therefore, you know, the economics of it is not good. That is, I think, the reason why we don't get schools asking for coins and most schools ask for stamps to be issued for their celebrations and, rather than coins because they can't afford the cost imp input by the Ananda College. So I think the real, the re my most appointment was I didn't want coins to get issued like stamps are getting issued. Luckily, Central Bank over the 70 years of its existence have issued only 70 types, even if you count the varieties of coins over the 70 years, which is one coin a year on average, even though that is average is mostly counted by the first 40 years when there were only nine commemorative coins issued. But uh, if it becomes like the stamps where there are 35 stamps issued every year or supposed to be issued and they end up issuing more than 50, then I think it's going to be a problem. Uh, so luckily it is not, uh, this never has become a problem. So I, uh, maybe I should not have stated all those points. But you anyway, put the one as a royalist, I sort of thought I would make those Maybe planets and I've got thousand on it. Ashley, you have a question? Maybe well, they don't. No, I would like to uh, say, for example, side with the uh, comments made by Mr. Puncheva, I think, no? Who spoke earlier? Well, college. Yeah, uh, my my great great uncle was the second principal of Arnold College. Okay. Right. He, he went to St. Thomas's, but then declared that he was a Buddhist and he was ostracized by everybody when he came back from Cambridge. So he got a first and so on. He, he didn't have a job. So he was offered the to be the second principal around the college and it was from what he has the little writings that you have done it was very very tough to to run a buddhist school actually because of the uh, and antagonism from the the british sort of administration and so on so what he said was very correct uh, that the school under the college came through a uh, fairly uh, what shall i say strong annealing process to produce what it is today. Thank you. Just a comment. Thanks. Thank you, Ashley, for that comment. I think uh, it's nice discussion. Let's start a discussion on this issue and other issues about coins. I think it's a thing. Uh, there are various issues. I think I was I raised all the issues. I mean, uh, so that if anybody has any questions, I, Andra, are there, are there any questions posted on uh, YouTube? Uh, yes, there's one question. I will paste it there on. Uh, oh, can you just read it out or just read it out? Yeah, I will paste it here, Dr. Kavar. Okay. Can you can you read it? No, I don't. Uh, no, I, I guess I'll open the chat. I'll open the can chat. you can you see it? This one. No, I don't see it. I don't see it. Let me. Open. Ah, yes, okay. Mr. Kavan, at the present, uh, few, few same dyes are used for minting of coins, but considering JR coin, the dyes were made by a different artist, isn't it? And also, I have dyes broken when I mint coins. Yes, actually, the 1978, it was a rush order. So the um, Royal Mint asked two people to do a two dies for the minting. And normally once a die is made, it is duplicated. The same die is used as a master die to create many other dies which are identical to it. And then they mint the coins from it. But there was no time enough 
for them to make multiple dyes from this dye, they didn't even make a single copy of it. And therefore, they used the master dye to meet, make these proof coins. The gold coins were also minted uh, with that dye. And then after that, the uh, 2,600 uh, circulation coins were minted with that dye. And after that, the bro dye broke. So they could no longer use that dye to create the multiple dyes which are used for, uh, for making the circulation coins. When you're making 2 million coins, I, I'm not sure how many dyes. I think nowadays they mint about 100,000 coins with a dye or so. So maybe they, had, they make those duplicate dyes. And that was, could not be done. So the next dye, which was one which was created by the other artist, was slightly different. This was not even noticed for a year or so after the thing that a, a Raj, Raja Vikramasinghe brought out this point and raised the point that this point was different. Uh, by which time most of the coins have gone into circulation, except for the few that have been kept by collectors who have managed to go and scramble and get a coin right at the beginning. So those few coins are available in circulation. Once the rest had been issued into circulation, it's impossible to get uh, fine coins. It is similar to recently back in uh, 2013, uh, there was an issue of a circulation issue of 2.6 uh, million coins, 3.6 million coins of a one rupee coin to 2013. And then the um, central bank transferred the order back to the Royal Mint. And the rest of the 150 million coins were minted in the Royal Mint. Those kinds are absolutely impossible to find in circulation. So I think uh, this is the issue that uh, that is why this coin is, even though there was 2,600 minted, that itself is a very small number. I don't think you'll find uh, there is that many available uh, among the collectors because it's uh, most of them went into circulation and trying to find it out from circulation. I know of one coin which was found in circulation and uh, I would have loved to forget it, but the, dealer who said he had it, he said that he accidentally gave it back in change. So that may be still circulating. Uh, anyway, I think uh, finding some of these, uh, that sort of coin in circulation would make it a much more bigger rarity than finding it uh, among uh, the uncirculated. I think quite a few uncirculated coins were there. I mean, uh, I know of must be having at least 50 of those uncirculated coins are available around the collectors. It's not as rare as uh, some of the others. But the really difficult coins to get are the uh, four coins which were never issued by the central bank. I mean, I think there should be a law saying that if a coin is minted, that it should be issued to the public Maybe even the gold coins. I mean, I'm sure there would have been collectors who were willing to pay the price of buying those gold coins. And uh, they are just uh, not issued. And then there were 200 for the IYSH. And uh, more recently, the EPF coin, which they minted only 100. That I think is very bad. The, the, and the Sri Lanka Numismatic Society has written about this to the central bank. And I think a minimum, if it is a silver coin, there should be a minimum of at least a thousand coins which are actually issued to the public over and above the organization's requirements. And if it is a low value coin, like the recent coin, which is was issued at 1,200 rupees, 300 rupees, it should be minted at least 10,000 of them because it shouldn't sell out in a few days. It should, there should be sufficient. And especially in that case, it was given to a staff of the uh, central bank. Only very few of them were available for collectors. So that mm -hmm. is things that need to be adopted by the no, central bank. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Probably not because we don't hear. Ashley, your, your mic is still on. Okay. 
Are there any other questions? Anybody has any questions? Put it in the chat session, I think. Is there any questions in the chat? Or I have not actually looked at the chat. Uh, there is the chat. Oh, I guess my chat has gone underneath my bar. Has anybody huge? I don't know whether there are questions in the chat. Can somebody who I got disconnected from my chat, the chat bar for some reason? Uh, Okay. Uh, Garmin, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Garmini. Yeah, yeah, Garmini, uh, Garmini, thank you very much, uh, Kamon, the light, lovely presentation, very knowledgeable. We are indeed thank thankful you. to you. Thank you very much, indeed. Thank you. Where is this? Can anybody see this chat and ask if there are any questions in the chat because I can't. So Andrew, there are no questions know. in there. Okay, fine. Thank you. Anybody else has questions about things? We can talk about lots. We have a few minutes more. We can talk about many things. Uh, the I, I had to, another nice comment I like to make is about the Premadasa sil, uh, gold coin. Both the silver and gold were not issued by the central bank. Uh, so the silver coin became very expensive. It was as I mean, not as much as the gold coin, but the Sindra coin was very expensive to get one of those coins. I never bought one because I didn't. I assumed that my collection would only have the coins issued by the central bank rather than uh, if they didn't decide to make, give it to the public. I was not interested. Uh, 15 years later, I managed, they, they had a whole lot in the vault of the central bank, and I managed to persuade the central bank to issue to public. So a small number of them, I think about thousand of them, who were sold by the muse, central bank museum. And they were available for sale for quite some months right? after that, I think maybe even a year or two. And now they are sold out, but it is, uh, quite a nice coin to get. It's a silver version of the thing. And as being the only silver rupee, I think it's a, it's a collectible. And uh, it came in a box uh, like this, green color box, green to represent uh, Sri Lanka, uh, the government, and uh, which are the UMP government. But at that time, it was actually a Seleco government. You know, it got released 15 years later. Uh, there are lots of various stories about uh, coin issue that one can. Yeah, this is uh, we used to mint the uh, print uh, certificates in Sri Lanka. So the silver coin has a certificate. And. Uh, uh, the another thing I forgot to say right at the beginning was, which is not acknowledged in, even in the central bank website, is that the first issue of the Buddha Jayanti coins were actually issued in proof as well. There was 1,800 uh, coins minted in proof of each uh, denomination. And they were sold as 400 coins uh, in a box of four and 700 coins 
or 800 coins it has uh, uh, 400 coins a box of 4 and 700 coins a pair of two and the box was issued was a blue color box central bank box with the central bank logo inside and uh, and uh, the four coins which was uh, oh what the hell seem to like that uh, for some reason my head that's gone off into the background Oh. Okay, that's better. Uh, so they were issued in a box of four like this. So, oh. Uh, so that is those that is that box. I mean, uh, Sally writes in his book that they were min sold. Uh, the two two uh, coins and uh, thing would have cost twelve rupees, and the box and the things were sold for seventeen fifty, and nobody were not very people were reluctant to pay five rupees more. Five rupees was a lot of money at that time to uh, buy this box. Uh, when I bought it in the U.S. 20 years ago, I paid a little over 100 U.S. dollars for it. I don't think you can find one of these boxes. I've seen them sell on eBay for $500 now. They're very difficult to find and commanding a huge price. So the, some of the commemoratives, I think, have a whole. Somebody asked me the value of a full commemorative collection. I estimated about three or four hundred thousand rupees, but then I have been informed recently that a set, a partial set, not even fully complete, uh, sold for six hundred and fifty thousand rupees. So I wouldn't be surprised if a full collection, which has all these commemorative box, won't sell for a million. Oh, this algorithm has a problem. Okay. Any other questions? We have about 10 minutes more till we'll have to wind up. So if anybody has questions, please ask for it now. I would, uh, oops. Oh, this algorithm, background algorithm seems to be playing up. Uh, even the, this is uh, one of the proof uh, non aligned conference coins. This and the proof Buddha Jayanti coins are not. Uh, listed in uh, the central bank website as been having been issued. I'm sorry with a few people who are going to come online were unable to join in. One was Harry. Uh, he had some issues with getting into Zoom. So Anyway, this whole lecture would be available on uh, yeah on the YouTube ch channel, so anybody can watch it later on. Okay, if there's uh, no other questions, then we will. Andrade will stop the lecture now. Okay. And close up. Thanks, Andrade, for yeah. the. Uh, hosting of this lecture. It was very nice of you to have spent your afternoon helping us to put these lectures online.